Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing something pretty exciting. We're going to be pitting this Volkswagen Virtus GT in its stock form against a stage 2 tuned version. To answer the question, is it really worth it? Yup, that's right. While that red car over there focuses on the exterior modifications, this blue car over here has a whole bunch of performance upgrades. So today, we want to answer the question. Should you keep your Virtus GT stock or tuned? Let's find out. You might assume that a tuned car is always superior, but that's not necessarily the case. Take for instance, upgrading a car to stage 2 which requires modifications like a downpipe. This hardware change demands a new tune to ensure the car's engine knows exactly how much fuel to inject and air to intake. However, for vehicles like the Volkswagen Virtus whose engine control units or ECUs were previously locked and only recently became accessible, the tuning process is far more complex. Tuners must invest significant time and effort into research and development to guarantee the car not only avoids engine damage but also produces more power than its stock configuration. This R&D process can span months or even years, begging the question, is tuning the 1.5 TSI Virtus truly worth it? Before diving into performance, let's first appreciate the Virtus' design. Let's cover the looks of the stock car first. Overall, the Volkswagen Virtus GT has always had a really good blend of sporty touches and a really good balance of proportions. Now, with all of these extensions, it looks very sporty and very aggressive. Uh, in the front, you have the front splitter that protrudes really far out from the bumper, which makes it look very mean from the front. On the side, you have these ORVM extensions that look very M-like and uh, on the side profile you've got a set of decals on each side and under that you have the side skirt which protrudes out really far as uh, you would have noticed from the front too. The rear also gets an extension behind the wheel which I have never seen in any other car and the uh, rear end also has a finned diffuser with a rain light that actually looks pretty nice from far. And when it comes to additional exterior mods, you can still go further. You can dechrome all of these chrome bits, which will make it look much more sportier. And of course, you can go for rims and lowering springs and get that stance right. On the other hand, the stage 2 car looks much more sleeper. It doesn't have any sort of splitters uh, protruding out of the bodywork, but it does have some really tasteful looking modifications here and there on the exterior. For example, you get these tinted front uh, headlamps, you have a full dechrome package and some of the parts like the mirror caps and this GT badging over here has been hydro dipped uh, in carbon fiber. Overall, it's a very cool looking car and at the back you have two twin exhaust tips protruding out of the rear bumper which again looks really cool and I think so with Virtuses you definitely have to get lowering springs and a bigger set of wheels because the stance will just improve by a million times. Under the hood, the Virtus GT comes with a 1.5 TSI 4-cylinder engine mated to a 7-speed DQ200 DSG gearbox. From factory, Volkswagen claims that the 1.5 TSI makes 150 bhp and 250 Nm of torque. But we have seen a couple of dyno runs where the 1.5 DSI actually over delivers by a couple of horsepower and a couple of Nm of torque more. And that could be good news to a tuner, wouldn't it? But getting a stage 2 setup done on a Virtus GT is not as straightforward as you guys already know. You have to completely change the ECU of the Virtus GT. So in the case of this car, uh, Code 6 removed the stock ECU and they bought a brand new ECU from Europe 
from a 1.5 TSI car and they have uh, retrofitted that ECU into this one and after you do that that is when you can start tuning the car and doing other sort of modifications to it so this car is currently running a downpipe and a stock replacement BMC air filter and with all of the new modifications with the new ECU downpipe and air filter it now makes 185 horsepower and 380 newton meters of torque now Code 6 has also flashed a TCU tune to this car which helps with faster shift times and just making the car responsive in all aspects. So let's shut the engine bay, hop into the driver's seat and see how it feels. Behind the wheel of the stock Virtus GT, it is a very demure car. It is linear, it is friendly and it is very refined. In fact, even pushing the car doesn't make it feel very startled or nervous at all. It is a linear car that pushes very seamlessly and when you are in front of a corner, it takes that corner in a fairly sophisticated manner. Yes, there is quite a bit of body roll, but the chassis is very compliant and it is a fairly enjoyable car to drive. However, things can go up to 11 very easily. Even without accessing new power, you can make this car drive much more nicely and make it much more engaging with just a simple set of coilovers, a, a better set of brakes because this chassis actually is genuinely nice and chucking it into corners feels rewarding it's not going to scare you and the levels of understeer is safe it's not something that will just take you straight into a wall but it is safe and it is fun after spending a long time with the 1.5 tsi that linearity from its engine can get a little bit boring and that's where the stage 2 remap really comes into play This is my first time driving a 1.5 TSI EVO engine in a Virtus GT. Internationally, the 1.5 TSI actually replaces the outgoing 1.8 TSI. So in VW's engine hierarchy, below the 2-liter TSI now comes the 1.5 TSI. And I think so this engine or this unlock for the ECU is something that the Indian car community has been waiting for a very, very long time. Tuners have just started to develop tunes and modifications for this car. So it's early days of development for this particular platform. It's decently quick. It's not the fastest thing out there. And that again is because the 1.5 TSI platform in India is just starting to get its set of modifications, tuners hopping onto the bandwagon and whatnot. So I know the 185 horsepower at least at the moment sounds well, not really worth it. I'm pretty sure, you know, couple of months or probably six, seven months down the line, this engine will start to get more and more and more potent as time goes on because people are still trying to figure out, you know, how to properly tune it. They're doing more and more dyno runs. So I'm pretty sure a couple of months down the line, this engine will start to make more and more sense. That being said, you have to spend roughly around 90,000 rupees to get this car tuned and well basically the ECU swapped out. 30k for the ECU swap from Europe and another 60k for the ECU and TCU tune. 
and coming to the TCU tune well that is another drawback for this car now i know the dsg sounds very very appealing but at the end of the day it is still a dq200 gearbox if i personally was going to tune or modify a vortus uh 1.5 then i would definitely go for the 6 speed manual option that they have just recently introduced and moreover it will just be more engaging to drive and you will have less anxiety from the thought of a dsg failure that being said is it worth tuning the vortus 1.5 gt i know this is going to be controversial and i'm sorry but at the moment i don't think it's worth it because the power gains are just not there yet uh and the cost of getting your vortus tuned is 90000 rupees i mean it's as expensive as a tune uh for a vrs or something of that sort so yeah it's very expensive with not a lot of return but i have to give it to the owner of this car of at least trying and you know being one of the pioneers of this platform because if we don't have people like surya tuning the car and you know starting development work on it we won't have the vortus gt as a tuning platform in the future so to the people who are tuning their vortus gts and not caring about voiding their warranty and what not salute to you because without y'all we won't have a pl- proper platform in the future <laughs> what other modifications would i suggest for the vortus gt well first and foremost suspension for sure because the stock suspension is all right it's little bit on the softer side so you know the handling is not as sharp as i would like it to be but put on a nice set of bilstein suspension and i'm pretty sure this thing will start to handle pretty damn well moreover i think so a brake upgrade is also very uh, necessary for this car at least it sounds really nice that i have to give it's a very nice sounding engine but yeah a brake upgrade is definitely needed for this car just to improve the brake feel and the biting point of the car needs to be a little bit more stronger so definitely a brake upgrade is also recommended if you are in the market for a vortus or already own a vortus 1.5 we recommend prioritizing auxiliary modifications like suspension and brake upgrades better tires and wheels before actually getting onto tuning the engine while maximizing power output might be tempting it's pointless if the car can't handle it or if the platform is not that developed tuners are working hard to create better tunes for the 1.5 tsi evo and we're excited to see what the vortus platform can achieve in the future for now i think so if you're buying a vortus you should focus on the overall driving experience and enhancing that Don't forget to like and share this video with fellow Virtus GT owners and subscribe to our channel. We're just 500 subscribers away from hitting 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.